Here we go. Season four. Very exciting. Starting off with the most dangerous enemy. Birds. See, I told you. What? What is this? What war is this? I'm guessing this is on the, the main continent or whatever. Okay. Falco. More people to get attached to before they die. This is very disorienting. I think they're they're directly alluding to that with him talking about like, wasn't I just flying around with swords fighting titans? Yes, it does feel that way, doesn't it? These are the Marlians, but I'm not really sure who they're fighting. My gut feeling is that they're not fighting the El El Eldians, Eldrians, but they're fighting like just another war on the continent against someone. Yes, please, please. Okay, what battle? What war? These damn birds. I need East Allied Forces. Are these Eldrians? Okay, yeah, they must be Eldrians. Warriors. That's not Berthold, is it? Looks just like him. He called him Udo. Is that Reiner? Oh, nice! The, yeah, new opening. The final season. Whoa, this is different. I like it so far. <laughs> Birds. <laughs> this has shades of like the the season two ending, but more upbeat. It's a big world out there now. This is weird, but great. The song and like so far, as far as I have noticed, no Aaron, no Mikasa, no Levi. It's just like the new world. Every opening tells a story, right? Pretty clear, I think, what what this story is telling. Is that the uh, Devil of the Earth, aka Aaron? <laughs> the other side of the sea. Last time we had the other side of the wall. I guess we're gonna get some Marley focus. World building. Don't get attached to Gabby. Don't get attached to Udo or whatever, whoever this person is. I feel like these are like Bertholdt and Reiner, no? Um, maybe I'm crazy. They could have just changed their names. Eldians who hate other Eldians. Interesting. Interesting approach. I don't think she's gonna make it. Jaw and cart. This is so weird. It's like a totally different show. Could have definitely used this technology a couple seasons ago. Wait, wait, wait. I'm I'm so disoriented. Is this in the future? If this is a cycle, is there any such thing as a as a future? It could be a coincidence, but that's what we've seen this side lose so far in the show. They lost Annie, the female Titan, and the the colossal Titan, Berthold. What? is going on this is such a, a curveball speaking of baseball yet another rug in the show pulled out from underneath our feet i expect nothing less <laughs> i'm proud of you season four you're you live it up to the legacy yeah it does seem like this is chronologically after season three they lost two titans leaving them vulnerable to attack by another country yeah, I guess they're just disposable to these guys. Why do they call him the Suicide Squad, I wonder? These inspirational speeches just ring hollow after Irwin. Reiner and Zeke. I guess. She's really gunning for the top. Not a good place to be. Told you not to, not to get attached to Gabby. 
So while this is not Reiner and Bertholdt, this gives some insight into their character. These kids have been raised as child soldiers, and we sort of already knew that about them. It was clear that they they were in there from a very young age, because that's when they destroyed the wall. And you could feel that element of brainwashing, but now we have a story behind it. It's that your people are responsible for the evil of the world, and by participating, you not only clear your name, but like save the people you care about who are being held in internment. So even without there being a giant threat from within the walls, which I still feel like there is, this makes Reiner and Bertholdt's actions feel a little bit more understandable. Still terrible, but understandable. At this point, these kids are not being coerced anymore. That's already happened. The manipulation's already passed. They're tripping over themselves now to prove themselves, to gain the approval of the superiors. I'm sure Reiner and Bertholdt also had people they cared about back home, and Annie. Strong words. She really wants that Titan power. <laughs> really forcing his hand there. This girl's dangerous. Huh. Where is this going, Gabby? <laughs> Somewhere terrible, probably. She's playing on their humanity. Dark move. So what, you throw the grenades and then you, you escape as the dust settles? Nice shot. Oh no, I stuck out the, the guard post with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she talked a big, big talk, but pulled it off. If that doesn't get you Titan rights, I don't know what does. Is she gonna make it back? Did they both make it? No way. What am I looking at? What is this thing? Is this a, a, a new Titan or a version we, of an old one we, we just haven't seen yet? Wow. Reiner and Zeke, the military adventures. I wonder what Eren's up to. Probably yelling at something. A lot of time has passed, come to think of it. I wonder how they're handling relative peace. Pretty amazing how the way the episode is framed. Reiner and Zeke are like these, these awesome heroes swooping in to save the day. Totally different tone. It's amazing how quickly that can be shifted in, in shows, in media. The perspective is everything. Add like glorious music to it and you're like, yeah, yeah. Reiner and Zeke flying in. <laughs> The ultimate heroes, the ultimate soldiers. Marley, a military dictatorship. Utilizing seven of the nine titans as warriors, Marley conquers enemy nations with their overwhelming strength. In addition to their warriors, Marley's army, navy, and airborne forces assist in trampling their enemies. Seems like they're pretty much unstoppable. Except for one thing they didn't expect, and that thing's name was Erwin Smith. <laughs> Single-handedly, with the help of hundreds of scouts, taking down an unstoppable military empire. That's how I'm framing it in my mind, speaking of framing. Erwin. Erwin Smith, ultimate hero, savior of the human race. You call that a charge? <laughs> I've seen better charges. Is this... I'm confused about this Titan. It's not Ymir's next person, right? Did somebody eat Ymir? There's one Titan unaccounted for, and this could be it. Oh, it's Duck Titan! Looking pretty, pretty ripped there. Still got that backpack. He was just made for accessories. Oh no, no, you have a conscience. You'll never make it. I'm shocked that all the kids are still alive so far. Yeah, she just drank all the Kool-Aid. <laughs> all the... All of it. This guy looks like a combination of Bertholdt and Milhouse from The Simpsons. The translation we really didn't need, or didn't want. Damn, Duck Titan! Just went up a few ranks in my mind, in terms of power. There they are. Oh, I don't really, I don't think I thought about that in great detail. That's part of the Beast Titan's power, of course. Oof. That's why they had to get above them. Oh my god, it's insane, but kind of awesome. 
You call that a wall? That seemed better. Yeah, they don't they don't really listen. <laughs> he says as he watches his own side use them to eat other people. This whole thing is like a fanfic. It's like Titans against modern military equipment. How you doing, Reiner? How you holding up all these years later? Yeah. Can't say I blame you. <laughs> That's pretty great, you know. I got mixed feelings about it, but it looks awesome. That's how it goes. It's an arms race. The whole armored train thing reminds me of Valkyria Chronicles, if you guys ever played that. <laughs> who and who or what is this thing? Galliard, yeah, yeah, you said that, but... <laughs> this whole thing is just so cool, but I feel like uh, it's weird that I'm rooting for them. Why am I rooting for them? They're, they're fighting a war of aggression. They just look badass. That's that's it. I mean, that's really the extent of my principles. You look badass enough, and I'm gonna root for you. All this talk about principles and values, and all it takes is, you know, some cool music. <laughs> some cool music and some awesome action to just totally convert me to your side. If this show is a meta commentary on audiences, I've definitely lost this round. But if this is doing what I suspect it's doing, it's gonna be amazing. Because what I think is happening, at least partially, is we're getting how awesome these titans are. We already got a glimpse of that, but this action, for some reason, it feels like it's escalating the powers a little bit. And you got this new guy, Galliard. Galliard? And a great technique is to hype these guys up and then have them fight the the guys we already know. Have them fight Aaron and Armin. The anticipation that this might build for that is pretty cool, but we'll see. Oh, that's true. I guess in this instance, this one instance, it's not a war of aggression, it's a war of defense. Spare me. Here we go again. <laughs> yep. I hate Zeke, but he's good at what he does. Oh, what the heck? One last final attack, counterattack. I guess on some level you want that, right? Like, in its way, it makes Erwin and the scout's death more meaningful. You want the enemies to be as strong as possible to give credit to the fight that they, they had. The fact that they almost beat them. They almost beat Zeke. There's definitely something like that happening, right? Like showing relative power levels. This army, whoever they were, this invading force, they just served as basically tools to make these Titans look more powerful. That was their sole purpose in life. Wow, what an episode. <laughs> No, that's not the end of Reiner, is it? No way. He's fine. He's alright. Who am I looking at right now? What's wrong with this music? Those damn birds again. <laughs> They're going so heavy on the birds. They're like playing all my, my paranoia. There's something very bizarre about this song. It's like there's two songs playing at once. Maybe a, a pop-up has happened in my browser that I am mistaking for this song. It's got this creepy undertone. Wow, that was one of the most exciting episodes, I'd say. Very strange start to the season, but also perfect. Like, in classic Attack on Titan form, it, you know, puts you on your back foot. A little bit confusing at first, but ultimately a time jump. And then, some of the greatest action in the show, involving none of the, or very few of the principal characters, amazingly. It's like a villain showcase. Total switch in perspective. Eren, not around. None of the scouts in this at all. It increases the size of the world. How many nations are there? I mean, now I'm imagining like just a full-sized world, which I guess makes sense. Why wouldn't it be? It's similar enough to, to our world. This was one of the coolest uses of Titans I've seen. Like I said at one point, it feels like a fanfic, and I mean that in the best of ways. Like, it takes the Titans and their abilities and their powers to a very fun, imagined height. It sort of gives them free reign to be powerful, whereas a lot of what we've seen before is something like Eren versus a Titan, so they're sort of, you know, evenly matched, or the mindless Titans that are sort of stumbling around being defeated by scouts. This is a coordinated attack by multiple Titans working together to take out a modern or somewhat modern army. 
So it's very cool. So it's very fun in that way. I think I mentioned that just in passing when we get that little like Ymir and Reiner tag team moment when they're escaping. I said something like, it'll be really cool to see Titans get more organized and have a full on force. Here it is. This was it. And I think that's part of what makes the action so engrossing. So very fun start to season four. I'm curious to see how long it'll take for us to get back to the, the penal colony. Paradiso or whatever the hell they call it. I'm fine either way, honestly. There's a lot of interesting stuff they can do with this. It seems like they're setting up these, these child soldiers to be more than just one episode cannon fodder. Hopefully we'll get some more Reiner focus. I'll be interested to see how he's fared. He's not dead. He's not dead yet. There's too much potential in having him return to the, the island for them to throw him away like that. Although... <laughs> If there ever was a show where that happened. But it'll just have to wait. I'll see you guys next time for the second episode of season four.